Do you guys wanna know the secret to being disciplined? It's consuming so much ginseng root that you don't know whether or not you're gonna become Superman or have a three hour erection. But either way, what's gonna happen is you're gonna have so much energy you won't even have to worry about discipline. There are methods I've used to be extremely disciplined. And I say this to qualify what I'm about to say coming after this. I've had a six pack for 20 years. I've written multiple books. I have now multiple YouTube channels and multiple businesses. And most of those I've done part time. So I like to think I'm a very disciplined person and I wanna share five things that have helped me become that way. What's up guys, Alex Hine over at Modern Health Monk, author of Master of the Day, Let's get into number one. So the first thing that I do for discipline is I specifically try to do whatever the smallest habit is for a goal as opposed to the largest one. So for example, you see people go into the gym, all these rookies, these guys that are in their mid twenties, they start working out. What do they do? They're in the gym two hours a day. They're consuming creatine and protein powder and yet they look like crap. No disrespect, I was that guy. But the reason is they are way overdoing it. Like if I were just going to the gym the very first time, what I started doing was saying, all right, dude, what can you do to be in the gym five days a week? What is the amount of time? Just sit emotionally with yourself. And I think, okay, an hour a day? That's like a lot of time. 50 minutes a day? That's a lot of time. 30 minutes a day? I can probably do that. Too many people are like, I wanna get results faster, so I'm gonna double the output, but it doesn't work because 99% of people aren't even here a year from now. So I try to decrease the habit to the specific amount that I can do it with the most frequency. If I said I'm gonna write a book, I don't say I'm gonna write for four hours a day. I say, what can I realistically do every day? And I do that because I know a year from now, I'm still gonna be here. Now, one of the best ways to figure out what that small thing is, is with the free best year ever worksheet I've put together. It's the link below this video. Specifically, it helps you reverse engineer. What is the vision of the year I want? And then what are the daily rituals most likely to make that year happen? So you can actually track. This is what I want this year. This is what I want it to look like. This is what I'm gonna have to do to actually make that happen. So check that out. It's the first link below this video. It's really gonna help. Principle number two, the energy metric. There's a great concept in the book called How to Fail at Almost Everything and Still Win Big by Scott Adams. Scott Adams, the creator of the Dilbert comics, talks about how he wanted to get rich. And he said one metric that helped him a lot, one principle was, you know, if you had to get up at like 5.30 or 6 before work and work on your side hustle for two hours, don't pick the side hustle you think is going to make you rich. Pick the side hustle that energizes you the most because you're way more likely to stick out the difficulties, the hard times, the sheer duration that it will take to be successful when you like it and it energizes you or it's the least draining option. So for discipline, whether it's for the gym, or what business to build, or what career to be in. Choose what energizes you the most and drains you the least, because you're gonna have the resilience to do that. Now that closely segues to principle number three, which is the resonance principle. When I've gotten to write all my books, I don't believe that the most important thing is putting your ass in the chair and just writing and forcing yourself to write for three to four hours. What I believe is that the most effective way to write a book is what is a ritual I can do three, four, five, six, seven times a week and in what circumstances to be motivated to be happy to write this book. So I found, you know what, the best times for me to write or right after I worked out in a area that's not where I live. Four days a week after the gym, you know, two days it's on the weekend, two days it's after work. Those four times I go to the same cafe and I sit down for one to three hours. I've written, let's say a couple thousand words. And then I know that I've completed my quota for the week of 10,000 words, whatever it is. In general, you know, so many people try to force themselves to be successful in careers they don't like, or to hang out with people they don't like because they're lonely, or to force themselves to do workouts they don't like because it's gonna get them fit. But inevitably they're not there a year from now. Like the number one correlation with having the life you want is as simple as are the habits you set up clear, simple, easy enough that in a year from now, you're still gonna be doing them because if they're not, it's not worth it anymore. Principle number four is momentum. It is way easier to do goals and habits when you maintain momentum. Now, I just talked about how I would go to the gym and I would work out before basically writing because it was way easier to write after working out because of that energy boost versus just sitting at home and trying to write in my home apartment. But the momentum principle is simple. When you're not at home and you maintain momentum, you're way more easy and way more likely to be productive and to get things done. So when I was first building this channel, the number one thing that I did was I decided to not go home from work and maintain momentum. So what I did five days a week was I'd go to work nine to five. I'd drive to my gym, 5.30 to 6.30 to be in the gym. And then I'd go to a cafe, have dinner there from 7 to 10 p.m. I would work on my business. That was only feasible because I maintained momentum. Because if I went home and I sat on that couch, game over. 
I'm not doing diddly squat and I sure as hell am not doing a hard thing like building a real business. So if you figure out what can I do to maintain that momentum, usually not going home is the easiest way, you will often get a lot more done. Finally, focus on the animal body. Now, this is as simple as when you're tired, hungry or unhealthy or you haven't slept well, it is way more hard to find discipline. That willpower is like a muscle. And when you're exhausted or hungry, you have low blood sugar, you're not sleeping well, you went to bed too late, it's the animal body that's tired. And so of course, willpower and discipline are also tired. So make sure you are sleeping well. Make sure you're a healthy person. Make sure you eat home-cooked, non-processed foods. Make sure you're staying away from excessive coffee and alcohol and sugar. Live a healthy life, you will have more discipline and grit than the average person just by default. So don't forget to download that free guide that goes along with this, the journaling and best year goal setting worksheet. It's right in this little end card right here. You can click it. And then there's another great video on discipline right here, guys.